Hi and hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, what we are going to start is our discussion on the discrete time Markov chains. We have already seen an overview of stochastic processes and we said at that point of time that the Markov chains play or Markov process in general plays a critical role uh, in our analysis of queuing systems. So, at least in the all the basic queuing systems or any queuing system that you try to model uh, in the beginning uh, as a first level, right, it always relies on this Markov process. So, it is basically you need to understand and uh, you know equip with the necessary background on this Markov chains. Of course, this is not intended to be a complete uh, you know analysis of the complete theory of Markov processes. We will just see what is Markov process and some basic properties and whatever is the relevant things that is, uh, is more important for our purpose, right. So, that part is what then we are going to um, see. So, as we already defined it, but you may recall the definition which says that a stochastic process here since we already assumed this to be discrete time. And since it is Markov chain, it is the state space is already we are assumed to be discrete. So, because it is a discrete time as well, so we said that you know we will be calling it as in this form rather than x of t, it is x sub n uh, is said to be a discrete time Markov chain or simply we will call this as a Markov chain without the adjective which is discrete time. If this property holds for all states in the state space and for all time points. Obviously, we are assuming that the conditional expectations are well defined meaning the left side of this equation is well defined then right side is automatically defined. Okay. So, basically what we are assuming this is what we known as the Markov property right? and this Markov property should hold true for this process in order for us to call this x n as a discrete time Markov chain or simply a Markov chain. As you already pointed out here both parameters and state spaces are discrete okay. and what this says is that what this means is probability that x n plus 1 is equal to j meaning finding the process in the state j at time n plus 1 given that the process was in state i at time n and at state i n minus 1 at time n minus 1 and so on and it started at the state i 0, this probability would be same as the probability of x n plus 1 equal to j given only the x n equal to i. So, what does that mean? The conditional distribution, right? this is what is conditional probability and since we are requiring it for all j and all i and all states. So, this is basically you know you are looking for all possible i j i minus 1 i n minus 1 and so on right. So, that means the conditional distribution of x pl n plus 1 you can think uh, as a timeline that you know you are standing at time n and n minus 1 is in the past and n plus 1 in the future right. So, the conditional distribution of x n plus 1 given the past and the present depends only on the present and not on the past. So, that the knowledge of the past history of the process plays no role in further evolution of uh, the process under study and whatever is required for its future evolution all those information are you know contained in the description of the state of the process at the present time that is it. So, if you are given that x n equal to i, so that is sufficient enough uh, to go further to predict what is going to be the uh, future behavior of this process. So, that is what essentially this tells. So, this is uh, informal way like past has no bearing on the future only the present has right. So, which may not be true in many applications, but which is which are true which is going to be true at least in our queuing systems in most cases that uh, property to hold true. So, this is a very simple as we already pointed out it is a very simple form of dependency that dependency going back in time 
only one unit of time and it is very useful form of dependency among the random variables right. That is why its popularity is there for Markov process everywhere you will find applications. Even if it is not really the things that you know this does not hold that is not independent of the past. In any analysis many a time you tend to start with uh, you know such an assumption that only the present matters for the future not what happened in the past right. So, this is what is the Markov chain the definition. Now, this particular quantity that we are seeing it here right. So, this particular quantity because this is what is relevance right this is what in terms of this only you are defining the property. Now, this particular quantity what which is what is this we denote it by p i j of n and we refer this as transition probability or one step transition probability and what this gives this p i j of n gives the conditional probability of making a transition from state i to state j at time n from time n to time n plus 1. So, in from you are standing at time n and at this point of time you know your state is i. Now, this then the description is that what is the probability that in n plus 1 it will be in state j that is what is this basically. So, that is why this is one step transition probability of uh, many a time you may refer to the simply as transition probabilities. Transition probability simply means it is always one step. Okay. And if it so happens that this p i j of n is equal to some constant p i j irrespective of what is this n is right. Then the Markov chain is said to be stationary Markov chain is said to have stationary transition probabilities or the Markov chain is called as a time homogeneous Markov chain or simply a homogeneous Markov chain. Of course, in our case we consider as we said already like uh, when we are talking about queuing system that we are looking at only the time stationary elements as far as our things are analysis are concerned. So, the Markov chains that arise in such models are basically time homogeneous uh, Markov chains right. So, this is what is we are going to look at it and if it so happened which means that it is independent of whether you move from you are looking at moving from time uh, step 2 to 3 or you know 27 to 28 in the time points because we always refer to the parameter as time points for easy reference right. So, this probability remains constant irrespective of what is it. So, you have this of course, if, if you make it dependent the whole theory will go through, but you know things are a little bit more complex there ok. So, the matrix P which we form by putting together all these conditional probabilities one each for each pair of state is what is called as the transition probability matrix or simply we may abbreviate it as TPM which is transition probability matrix ok. And so, basically what we have here we have a P here which is basically P i j the matrix which is suppose if I assume that state space to be you know 1, 2, 3 and so on for simplicity right. So, suppose if I assume this to be 1, 2, 3 and so on, then I will have here P 1, 1, P 1, 2 and so on, P 2, 1, P 2, 2 and so on ok. Now, this is what is the matrix. So, the states here 1, 2, 3 and so on, 1, 2, 3 and so on here right. So, this element right is basically the probability of going from 1 to 1 is what is represented by this element and this element from probability of going from 1 to 2. 1 to 1 means it remains in the same state that is what you know it might it would mean in one step ok. So, this is moving to state 2 and this quantity will be moving to state 3 and so on and you would see that all of these are non-negative that is clear because they are all probabilities and since from 1 it has to make a move to a any one of the states it could be one or it could be other than one anything. So, it has to move. So, basically if you look at the sum of these probabilities in this row they will be equal to one right. So, that is what you will observe you will observe that each PHS is non-negative and their sum is one right 
the row sum is equal to 1. So, such a matrix is what is called as stochastic matrix, right. So, in the matrix theory like this, this is uh, uh, in matrix theory language this will be called as a stochastic matrix or random matrix in some, but random matrix may have slightly different uh, meaning in general. So, we may refer to this as simply as stochastic matrix means each entry is non-negative and the row sums are 1 is called stochastic matrix. Of course, it has some special properties like one of its eigenvalue is 1. So, you will have some relevance when we are trying to analyze a Markov chain in general. Like in addition, if uh, the column sums need not be 1 in general, but if it has, if it so happened that the column sums are also equal to 1, then it is called doubly stochastic matrix. Again, you know, for a Markov chain which has with a doubly stochastic matrix, you have some special properties, right? That's why you know it might be of uh, some use if you encounter such a scenario. But in general, this is what will happen, right? Non-negative and row sums are one. This is what is called the uh, transition probability matrix, which basically is what is the Markov chains. All the probabilities you are putting in the matrix form, and if the number of states here, if it is finite. Okay. So, you are going to have a finite matrix, if not this is going to be an infinite dimensional uh, matrix that you may, you will have. Okay. So, this description of Markov chain, right, you know instead of giving the probabilities 1 for each state and so on, if you give this P that describes the Markov chain in, in one way, right. For a Markov chain Xn, you need corresponding transition probabilities. So, that transition probability is simply this transition probability matrix. Now, let us look at some examples here. So, this is a Markov chain whose state space is the set of integers is said to be a simple random walk if for some p probability of moving from i to i plus 1 is p and from i to i minus 1 it is 1 minus p and there is no other transitions happens, right. So, basically what you have here is a simple random walk. So, you could assume that you know it, it, it starts at uh, you know you could have something like this if you have at 0, you have minus 1, you have 1, 2 and 3 and so on right, minus 2 and so on you have. So, at some point of time right. So, you suppose if you are looking if you are looking at uh, you know uh, a situation where you know you are standing at here right and then towards this right you have a probability p and towards left you have probability of 1 minus p that is what is, is happened, right. So, at the next time point you will be either at 0 or at uh, 2 if your current position is 1 and this p remains same irrespective of where, whatever is the situation. So, it moves either uh, you know a movement towards your right one step or left one step in the next time point with corresponding probabilities p and 1 minus p. And if this so turns out that if this p is equal to half, then what you are going to get is the what is known as simple symmetric random walk. Simple random walk or SRW if this is the scenario which is in one dimension. Of course, the same thing you could describe it in two dimension, three dimension and so on uh, and one would, one would have some properties studied in that. And this will be referred to as simple which is SSRW if the probabilities of moving to the right or left are equal which is probability of 1 by 2 in one dimension. So, this is all one dimension. This is a Markov chain right because it does not depend on right uh, the previous cases right where two time step before whether it was in 1 or it was in 0 does not matter because at each time, time step it makes a uh, independent time step. So, the random walk is in general would fall into this Markov chain category. Now, this example uh, we have already seen the number of heads in the first n tosses in a sequence of uh, coin tosses, right. You, you toss a coin infinitely of uh, infinite number of time and you count the number of heads in the first n tosses. So, in that uh, sequence suppose if you count this x n, right. So, this uh, if you, if you write what would be this x n, suppose if my x n is equal to some 10, okay. now x n plus 1 would be what? It is either 
if the, if that 11 if the n plus 1 of the task if it turns out to be head then it will move to 11 or it will remain as 10 one of this value. So, this is nothing but my x n plus 1 or x n this remains as uh, x n right. So, in the n plus 1 of the task. So, of course, with certain probabilities here right if the probability of head is p so some if you assume then this will happen with certain probability and this will happen with certain probability say suppose if I take this is with p this is with probability 1 minus p you can think uh, which is which is basically the probability of obtaining a head in a way right which is what is this p would mean ok. So, this sequence obviously you would see that uh, what was there you know whether x n x n minus 1 what was there it plays uh, no role right. So, this x n plus 1 is in terms of either x n or x n plus 1 that is all right one of these two values only it can take because it cannot take 9 or it cannot take 12 and so on. So, so that that is why x n minus 1 does not play a role obviously like because of you know this kind of relationship right you know you, for Marco chains if, if x n satisfy this kind of relationship where x n plus 1 can be given as a function of x n and a random variable which is in general independent of this. So, this whole thing right I can write it as some function of say x n and some y n plus 1 ok. So, the result of the n plus 1 of the task which is independent of this section. So, the here in the sequence we are assuming that the it kind tosses are independent. So, if this is the case in general then such a function such a process would also be obviously be Marco chain right. So, that is what you know you would see here this is a simple another very simple example which you can understand easily. Now, more examples for example, consider a communication system that transmits the digits 0 and 1 each digit transmitted must pass through several stages and at each stage uh, there is a possibility that the digit can, will get changed with probability p or it will not be changed with probability 1 minus p. So, what will be the next uh, digit right in the next stage what will be the digit depends on only the current one either that will remain the same or it will get changed what was there some 10 stage before it does not matter for it right. So, that is and a gambling model the gambling models like many of them uh, you can uh, formulate which will happen to be Marco chains. So, you, you consider a gambler right he plays a game and at end of each game if he wins he will get rupee 1 that is will happen with probability p or he will lose rupee 1 with probability 1 minus p ok. Now, like suppose that the gambler quits play his play either when he goes uh, out of money or he attains a fortune of rupees some n ok. Suppose if assume that the opponent has infinite amount of money I mean you do not restrict, but he has a finite amount of money suppose if you think right. Then things will change like right, depending upon assumptions that you are making it. So, in that case what might happen are both players put together if they have total money is say capital N suppose if that is the scenario if you are looking at it ok. Then there will be another uh, you know model that so it, depending upon what this is not precise right but you have to say how much money each player had in the beginning where they are starting ok and what happens when one of them go broke right. So, and whether or if there is infinite amount of money between either one of them or you know both of them then things will go on. So, that is why the state space is also uh, will come into play accordingly, but whatever it is like it is it is a Marco chain it will turn out to be right. Suppose if you assume that you know both of them put together have total of n amount and one starts with some x amount and the other starts with some n minus x amount. Now, they play the game. Now, the game will be played until one of them go broke which means that one of them loses all the money the other one get, gets all the money which means the state 0 and state n would be uh, one particular nature it will behave right. Once you go there the chain will remain there forever and, and so on right. So, we will see that. So, that kind of thing. So, different kind of variations can be made out from 
such a scenario, gambling scenario, and uh, many a time you would see the Marco chain, the different phase or different features, uh, one, just by considering such a model and by tweaking the uh, the underlying assumptions, what happens when something you know a player is get ruined in in some sense, right? Uh, all those things can be analyzed further. Okay, so these are some simple examples. Now you know a random variable is probabilistically specified by its distribution. You know about completely about a random variable if you know its uh, distribution. Likewise, we said that the stochastic process, at least its distributional properties, are specified by its finite dimensional distributions, right? So, what happens in the case of Markov chain? Whether you can have a complete description? So, it's possible. That's what you know. We said at the point of time in many situations, like many interesting processes, this can be uh, the complete specification can be given in terms of some simple uh, quantities, right? That's what you know. We will see in the case of Markov chain as well. What we are saying here. A Markov chain is specified by its initial distribution and its transition probabilities. So, transition probabilities, all transition probabilities if you know and if you know its initial distribution, then the Markov chain is completely specified. What do we mean by that is the following. Suppose the initial distribution is this, right, and also you have PIGs which are the transition probabilities, right. Suppose if you call this as mu i to be the initial distribution of uh, the chain, then what we are saying is that this probability of uh, the process starting at i naught being at i 1 at time 1 and so on being at i n, the state i n at time n, this joint probability is equals this quantity or it is given by this, the product of p i k to i k plus 1 for k is 0 to n minus 1 times mu i naught, right. This is what we are saying. So, this probability is simply given by this. So, if I want, so this is for any r n for any i 1 to i n, right, uh, this is what is going to happen because finite dimensional distribution in case of discrete random variables is just that mass function, joint mass function. So, that is what you know we are writing it here. So, this is you see if you know this, you know all these p's and this mu's. If I know, then I can get this probabilities, right. So, that means that if I know this transition probability matrix and the initial distribution, then I can get the distribution. Now, how do you see this? It is very simple. Look at the left hand side, right. You take this as one event and the rest of the things as another event, then you write probability of uh, you know this x n equal to i n given x 0 to x n minus 1 multiplied by this, right. This is the conditional probability. Now, you look at this quantity, the first element in this. Here, since x n is a Markov chain, this conditional probability would be equal to this conditional probability because of Markov property. This remains same as this. And this is nothing but the one step uh, transition probability which is p i n minus 1 to i n is what this probability is. Now, this remains the same. This is same as your original one with one less index. So, you repeat the process then finally, you will arrive at this kind of scenario with final L entry would be probability of x naught equal to i naught which is what is written in terms of mu. So, you get the right hand side. So, it is a very simple thing to see that you know how this can be specified. And you see here in this particular case of uh, Markov chain. The, it is completely specified. So, each Markov chain is specified by its uh, is associated with one stochastic matrix and for each stochastic matrix you can find a Markov chain. Now, along with this if you specify the initial distribution then you are completely specified. If initial distribution is different then the Markov chain behavior would be different, but this p would remain the same, right. Now, one useful tool which uh, is used in Markov chain and Markov process or continuous time Markov chain theory is uh, what we call as a state diagram, a state transition diagram is what commonly used state transition diagram or transition probability diagram or simply a state diagram or transition graph. What do we mean? What is this? For a Markov chain, this is a directed graph where the nodes represents the states and the edges right which is directed arcs 
represent the possible one step transitions. More precisely, this diagram contains an edge from node i to j if and only if p i j is strictly greater than 0. This is a very useful tool in visualizing a Marco chain and studying its properties. As you go along, you will see how much it is easy if you know this uh, transition diagram in terms of it to look at the Marco chain and we will use this extensively in case of Marco chains that we are encountering. And in the, in the applied fields like mostly in engineering and say computer science networks or network you are trying to model, it is a very complex Marco chain and how do you describe the Marco chain, right. They will simply describe it in terms of such a diagram. So, this is what is uh, relevant. You will see many uh, literature in the papers or uh, research articles where a Marco chain, they will say like this is a Marco chain whose transition or diagram or transition graph is as given below, finish, right. So, that is, that is, so you will get some, some such thing, that is what it means. So, now let us see for this particular example, uh, how we are getting it here. So, you have now states 0, 1, 2, 3, right, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, that means like uh, this is basically 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. If you if I take this, then this is its transition probability matrix. So, this 1 by 3 means this is P 0, 0, right. So, 0 is, so there are 4 states. So, I have here 4 states 0, 1, 2 and 3, right, which are all the nodes in this graph. It is a directed graph uh, is what then you are having it here. Now, P00 is 1 by 3 is what is represented as a self loop with 1 by 3 written uh, on top of that, right. So, this is what is uh, the arc representing P0 and 0 in one step what happens. P01 is 2 by 3, P0 and 1. So, from 0 the probability of moving to 1 in one step. So, the direction is towards from 0 to 1 and a 2 by 3 return on top of it, right. That is this 2 by 3 and this 0 to 2 it is 0. So, there is no arc. So, we do not represent zeros here. Only non-zero quantities are mentioned here or positive probabilities are mentioned here. So, 0 to 2 it is 0. So, there is no directed arc here. Similarly, from 0 to 3 there is no directed arc. Similarly, 1 there is a self loop with half and from 1 to 0 with probability half right that is what this row represents. So, if I count from here like all the arcs and if I sum their values they, should, they will be equal to 1 ok. Similarly, from 2 it is all 1 by 4 to all the things. So, from 2 to 0 it is 1 by 4, 2 to 1 it is 1 by 4, 2 to 2 is 1 by 4, 2 to 4 is 2, sorry, 2 to 3 is 1 by 4 and 3 it comes back, it, it can, it will remain there. So, what does that mean is that basically from 3, I can reach only 3, which means once I reach 3, I will stay here only, like the process will not move anywhere. In each step, in a deterministic manner, this will remain at 3. So, that is why this particular state is what will be called, we will be calling that as an absorbing state. It will, the chain will get absorbed once it moves to uh, that particular state at any point of time, right. So, so, this is, so this diagram if you see rather you instead of depicting through this matrix or you know writing down the transition probabilities or writing down in the, how this x behaves with the what probabilities and so on. If I, if I draw this diagram, if I draw this diagram which is the transition probability diagram, then I have basically described the, the transitions of the Markov chain, right. So, this diagram is a very useful tool. And for your easy understanding of the Marco chain, which means when you have discrete states, like you know, then you can make it as 0, 1, 2, 3, and it is both discrete time and continuous time, like this will turn out to be a very useful tool in understanding, right. So, for understanding, you know, you can easily uh, depict the Marco chain's behavior through this transition diagram or transition prob. So, here it will be probabilities, when you go to continuous time, it will be rates in terms of. So, that is why. Sometimes the to make a distinction, it says transition probability met, uh, diagram or graph. Okay, so remember the, about this state uh, thing. Now, 
we talked about so far only about Markov chain and it one step. Now, we may have interest in knowing like uh, if today is our current time point if it is in particular state, now what is going to be the process state after say 2 time units or 10 time units or 5 time units, not just 1 time units, right. That is that would be our interest. So, basically what we mean is that we have a Markov chain with state space S and one step transition probability is P i j or the transition probability matrix P. Now, we define P i j in the superscript within bracket n to mean this quantity. Okay. This is as opposed to P i j of n that we defined earlier in a non-homogeneous case. Right? That is not the thing here. Here we have this P i j in the superscript n meaning this quantity which is basically probability of finding the process at time n in state j given that the process at time 0 started in state i. Since it is a Markov chain, it is homogeneous. So, this could be true for any k, not just k is equal to 0 as we have written down here. This could be true for any k greater than or equal to 0. right? So, that is why this is also same as this probability. You can as easily see here because the homogeneous. So, this is called as n step transition probabilities. So, this is what is called as the n. So, we have originally one step transition probabilities which is p i j. Now, this is n step transition probabilities which is p i j n. Now, how do we compute this uh, uh, n step transition probabilities? You can condition easily like you can easily you can uh, work it out to see that if suppose you, if this is the thing that I have to compute what I can do I can use my total probability law to condition on what was the process at time n minus 1 and multiply by the corresponding probabilities right total probability law that I can use. So, I can use it at any step time point. So, ultimately what you will reach you will arrive at here. This is what is known as chapman kolmogorov equations which is very simple that you know you can you just have to condition at an intermediate time right and p i j mean going from i to j in m plus n steps is basically same would be given in terms of going from i to k in m step and from k to j in n steps the remaining n steps. And since this k could be any state in the state space, so this k you have to sum over all possibilities, right? That is what is essentially this equation tells you. So this is normal uh, if uh, conditioning on the what would be the at some intermediate time point after m time units, what is the position of the process? So you are conditioning on that. So now suppose if I take uh, this m to be one, for example then I am moving from i to k in one step and in the remaining n minus 1 step I move from k to sorry n step k from k to j because p i j of n plus 1 is what we are looking at it here. right? So, this is true for all n. So, you can you know write it down explicitly and see that you know how this is true because this is one of the fundamental relationships that we will have in Markov chain when we are trying to compute multi-step transition probabilities. Okay. Now, if we denote this uh, n step transient probability matrix by this p to the in the superscript n within bracket, then what this equation if you write it in the matrix form and you collect all these things in the matrix you put everything is in the matrix then this would be equal to this quantity and this would imply that the probability of the n step transient probability is simply the nth power of the matrix P and you note that the 0 power I mean your 0 step transition probability is I right that is what is the case and you know. So, this one so you for example, you can look at first to understand 2 step so, that will be in terms of 1 step which is basically P. So, P into P is what then you are, you are going to get here right. So, that is P square easily you can see that my P square square is basically p in one step. So, that is p into p. So, which is 
basically p square that is what you know you will get and similarly you would uh, arrive at in general as this. So, now this makes my life easy like if I want uh, the n step transient probabilities to be computed what I will do I will take the transient probability matrix and I will uh, raise that matrix to the required power and the corresponding entries will give me uh, the corresponding number of steps in which the Markov chain will make transition from one particular state to the other particular state. Obviously, like if p is finite you can do this nicely, but if p is infinite of course, you know you have little difficulties, but that is you know uh, will be expected right. Now, let us look at some examples of such uh, scenarios. Suppose the chance of rain tomorrow depends on the previous weather conditions only through whether or not raining today or not and not on the past weather condition. So, yesterday's condition we are assuming yesterday's condition does not play a role whether there is going to be rain tomorrow or not and we are assuming that today is what is going to play a role. Now, suppose if it is raining today then it will rain tomorrow also with probability 0.75 and if it is not raining today then it will rain tomorrow with probability 0.4. Okay. Now, it will rain tomorrow suppose if we call that as 1 right and 2 suppose if I make the states as this way right. So, then if it is raining today means state 1 it will rain tomorrow again state 1. So, the probability is basically 0.75 and if it is not raining today, so the state is 2. So, basically what we are making it here, 1 means raining and 2 means no rain is what then we are making it as a state right 1 and 2 that we are depicting here. So, that means no rain today, tomorrow it will rain with probability 0.4. So, then this is the transition probability matrix. Right. You, once you know these two quantities, these two quantities automatically determined. So, this is what is transient probability matrix. Now, if I want the probability that it will rain 4 days from today given that it is raining today. So, what I want is this. I want to compute this and I can compute this as the fourth power of this particular p and when I do that, you know I will end up with this matrix. Now, what I what is want? probably it will rain 4 days from today given that it is raining today. So, today is in state 1 and uh, in 4 days down the line also I want to be in state 1. So, the corresponding probability is 0 0.6212 right. This is what is uh, the required probabilities. Now, since I have the other 3 quantities I can also answer if that is the asked in the other 3 quantities. One thing you can observe here is that you know this one and this matrix. So, here 0 0.75, 0 0.4, but here this has come very closer and this has come very closer. Now, if I take more powers, this will come very closer, you will see and then you will see why and how, what does that mean little later. Okay, just observe the phenomena that is all. Now, there is another example. Suppose that balls are successively distributed among 8 urns. So, 8 boxes are there and you are putting, you have infinite amount of balls, uh, you know, at hand and you are going to distribute this balls successively among these 8 runs and when you pick up each ball, the each ball with equally likely it, it will go to any of uh, these 8 runs right with that mean with probability 1 by 8 any ball can go into any of these 8 runs and assume that the urns have you know can also hold you know any amount of balls inside. Now, what is the probability that there will be exactly 3 occupied urns after 9 balls have been distributed? Suppose if that was the question. Now, what one can do? You can define xn, xn to be the number of non-empty urns or occupied urns after n balls have been distributed. Then xn is a Markov chain with states 0, 1, 2 and 8 because right initially it is everything is empty right and then you start putting it one after the other. So, in the first time you know you will pick the ball with equal probability it can go to any one of these 8 urns and second term again like this it will go right. So, what will be the transition probabilities? Transition probabilities will be of this form p i to i 
is i by 8 right because you are looking at the non empty urns or occupied urns after n balls have been distributed ok. And from 0 suppose if you are in state 0 which means the initial state is 0. Now, you will go to 1 in the very first step because in the first step it has to be put in any one of these 8. So, if I look at if I put i is equal to 0, p 0 to 0 is 0 and 0 to 1 is 1 right. So, it will go to state 1 and from then onwards of course, it will, it will not be in a deterministic fashion right, it will be in a random fashion with according to some probabilities it will play out. So, you will see that from i to i minus 1 or i to i it will remain there because once it reached the process reached state 3 it will remain either 3 or it will move to 4 it will not come back to 2 as you know because we are counting the number of non empty urns. So, p i to i plus 1 so this is what is would be the transition probabilities and the desired probability is p 0 3 the 9 step probability from moving from 0 to 3 in 9 step which you can once you write down this p right once you write down this p raise it to the power 9 and you compute p 0 3 of uh, uh, 9 step. So, you will it will turn out to be this probability right one can do it in this uh, way, but you know many a time you know you need to uh, uh, look at it a bit more closely you may be able to formulate uh, or the solve the problem in a slightly easier way if you can formulate slightly differently. Now, look at for this is for our problem depending upon the, so this is always work like now you ask any question like whether it is uh, 3 occupied urns or 4 occupied urns or you know whatever is the case like you know in 9 balls have been distributed everything you can answer from this p 9. But for 3 occupied urns and 9 balls you can even condense and then you can have a, a smaller uh, Markov chain as well that is what you know we are going to explain how it is. For the our problem meaning that 3 occupied urns after 9 balls have been distributed that is the problem that you have. Now, we already said that uh, the first transient deterministic that it will make from 0 to 1 fine. So, it is 1. So, by the basic uh, property you know that this probability would be actually be equal to this one because the, the uh, one other probability that one step from moving to 0 to 1 is 1. So, you are multiplying going to multiply this by 1 to get to this. So, this is what actually you need to compute. You remember that p 1 to 3 in 8 steps is what you need to compute. Now, we can simplify the problem by letting this description. What do we mean by this is that see you want exactly 3 occupied urns. If it is more than 3 you are not bothered whether it is 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 you are not bothered right. So, all these states you condense you condense and 0 also you do not need because right because anyway first step you have made it 0 to 1 and from there only you need to compute. So, 0 also you do not need. So, you keep the original states 1, 2, 3 in the same meaning, but then the, the 4 onwards you, know, you condense it to some new state 4. So, with the state space 1, 2, 3, 4 and y n which is maximum of either x n plus 1 or 4 because more than 4 anyway you are just combining to 4. So, you can write down the transient probabilities right you write down these original transient probabilities you will see that a portion of it would remain as it is and then the remaining portion will all condense to this particular one here once you reach there ok. So, this will be so this 1 by 8, 7 by 8, 2 by 8, 6 by 8, 3 by 8, 5 by 8 would be as per this but beyond that everything is condensed in some sense here right that is what is the new state 4 which you will get in the state space would mean. Now, you will see that this is the p for this chain y n and y n it depends on x n, x n is a Markov chain. So, y n is also a Markov chain and uh, uh, this would be the transient probability matrix. Now, you need to compute here the appropriate quantities that is what it is basically. So, you get the fourth power of this p. So, you will get this expression. Now, you want 1 to 3 of this in 8 steps that would be 1 to some j in 4 steps and from j to 3 in some 4 steps. So, that means you, you can get this fourth power thing from here right. So, this 
actually is a prop multiplication of this and this which will give you this. So, this kind of tricks are common in Markov chain just to reduce the complexity. There is nothing wrong if you end up here and you have computed it these days is not the you know hand comp uh, calculation. So, you one might do it in uh, a computer. So, it does not matter you may stop here, but sometimes uh, right if it is more complex to reduce the complexity you may look at this that is an alternative way of computing the same quantity using this right. So, this is a very simpler uh, situation that we are having it here. Now, apart from this transition probabilities we will also be interested in what are called as state probabilities right. So, which we define so, again you have a Markov chain with state spaces and one, st uh, and one step transition probabilities. Now, you can define pi j of uh, superscript n as probability of x n equal to j. Remember if I write probability of x n equal to j given x 0 equal to some i then that becomes the n step transition probabilities, but I am not worried about where I started I am worried about where the process is at time n which means what is the probability that you know I would find this process in state j at time n. So, that is what is this interest ok right. So, this is all what is called as state probabilities which is what would be you know we will be interested in mainly in queuing theory as well. So, these are known as n step state probabilities again it can be shown by the same conditioning argument that you know you will you are there in state i at time m minus 1 and in one step from i you reached j and this i could be any of these states right. So, if you want to compute this, this is what is you will get right. Again something similar to your chapman kolmogorov equations, but here now this is all state probability. So, pi j at m step is pi it it is some i in m minus 1 steps and from i you come to j in 1 step and this i could be anything in the state space. So, there is a sum here that is all right. So, in matrix notation this means this right. Now, I can iterate pi m minus 1 would be again same as pi m minus 2 times p and so on. So, all the way up to this. So, this is now pi naught is the initial state distribution that you know probability that you know you would find you are starting you are starting at uh, uh, the particular state is what will be given by this uh, distribution. So, this is the initial distribution. So, if I know the initial distribution and the transition probability matrix then not just the n step transition probability matrix, but the n step state probabilities also I can compute it. So, this is a vector now this in the pi is a vector and p is a matrix here right that is what you know you will see right. So, this is what we call state probabilities. Now, you can see how it can compute those right. So, suppose uh, x n is a Markov chain with three states 0, 1, 2. So, basically what we have this is 0, this is 1, 2, this is 0, 1, 2 as the states and this as the transition probability matrix and uh, this is the initial distribution which is 1 by 3 which means it uh, initially it can be found in any one of these three states uh, with equal probability. Now, once this is there we can compute diff different things right. So, for example, we can compute what is the probability that in uh, time 2 it was in 2, but in time 3 I want to compute the probability that it will you will find it in 1 or which is same as 6 to 7 from 2 to 1 it's same probability. So, this can be obtained from this one step transition probability. Similarly, these kind of probabilities right this is joint and conditional or only purely joint and so on like for the complete path. So, what is the probability that it starts at 0 at time 1 it is at 0 at time 2 it is at 2 at time 3 it is at 1 if I want all this joint probability I can compute it right all these things would entail using this one step transition probabilities much like here that we have here. Here what we are saying starting at 2 at time 0 what is the probability that you know it is at 1 at time 1 and it is 2 at time 2 that is what we want. So, this could be written as in this manner and again one step 2 one step probabilities multiply you will get the probabilities this is you can get from one step itself. 
Now, suppose if you want more than one step, then you have to raise this p to the power. So, suppose in this particular case, suppose if I want uh, something like this quantity, right? So, I need to compute this p square, which I can compute p square to be this, then I can answer p 0 1 in two steps, which is in this particular case is this, which is equal to 5 by 6 from this matrix, right? 0 to 1 in two steps, right? Similarly, I can compute this probability. Now, what is the probability that it starts at 0 and it is at time 2, it is at 1. So, this can be written as in this way, where this is the two step transient probability and this is the initial distribution. So, I can compute this. Now, in a similar way, the state probabilities, pure state probabilities if you want, like probability, what is the probability that at time 2 it is at 1, what is the probability that at time 3 it is at 0, right? You can compute using similar argument, similar thing, right? P, P square, that is all you need. And for this, of course, initial distribution is also given, so you can compute it completely. And also the reverse way that if you find at time 2 it is in 1, what is the probability that you know it is uh, it has started at 0, right? This is you can use Bayes rule to compute these probabilities, but again you know you will use this piece into this case. So, this way like you know one can do uh, compute this multiple step, uh, one step probability, state probabilities uh, and try to answer the questions related to this. So, these are elementary stuff which what we have seen in this lecture. Uh, we will see more about its properties in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you. Bye.